Yep. So tonight I plan to talk about the Luddites. Have you heard of them, or perhaps the word Luddite? It's basically a pejorative term to tell people to grow up and get on board with apparent technological progress. But the word's rooted in a fascinating local story of uh, independent craft people <laughs> who 200 years ago rose up right here in Yorkshire and rebelled against the growing mechanisation of the wool industry that priced them out of business and concentrated hands, um, power in the hands of wealthy local oligarchs. <laughs> However, I couldn't get out of my head the theme from the last, the last Best Culture in September. The theme was disruption. So a month later, instead, I'm going to explore some disruption that I think is pretty important and the Luddites will have to wait for another day. Yeah. Um, we've seen a lot of disruption these last few years. There was 9-11 and everything that followed after that. The financial crisis, scandals in the media, the police, other institutions, the riots, Occupy, environmental stuff like the Icelandic ash cloud. I think it all fits together. Um, but tonight I specifically want to talk to you about politics and disruption. Uh, the political um, world is experiencing huge upheavals. There's a so-called Arab Spring uh, in the Middle East, the rise of the Tea Party in the US, and an amazing new kind of phenomenal rise of political party called Podemos in Spain. And it's happening in the UK too. There's the epic rise of UKIP, of course, the Scottish referendum, and the jury's out on Russell Brand, our saviour, but he's asking good questions. Um, but then at the same time, of course, there's this thing called voter apathy. Polls suggest that most of us simply are not interested in politics. Is this really true? Is politics boring, irrelevant, hopeless? Uh, or do we need to do something? Can we do anything? And how can we do that? Firstly, yes, I think we have to do something. Disengagement is dangerous. For example, I want to flag up a thing called TTIP. It's a huge new international trade deal that our current political leaders are negotiating into law that arguably spells doom for us all. Uh, check it out, but I'm not going to talk any more about that. But also, I want to argue that as the established political bodies retreat, perhaps unintentionally, a big black hole is opening up that will get filled by who knows what, without wanting to be melodramatic. That's what happened with the Nazis in Germany. We're not there yet, but it's the same principle. Uh, but what can we do? The current system, um, oh no, sorry, can we do anything? Yes. The Scottish referendum showed that people can become enthused and engaged in politics. People are itching for alternatives, including a good few people inside the political system. Um, but what can we do? The current system, the status quo, is derelict, broken down, rusty. So I propose that we need to really fundamentally reimagine, reboot and rebuild politics from the ground up. Uh, because systems need to innovate to stay fresh and relevant. There's a theory called the sigmoid curve, which argues you can never afford to rest on your laurels, but have to look, be have to look beyond the growth curve. Nokia is the perfect tragic example of a company that failed to do it, and our current political system is another. Um, so where to begin? Locally, I'd suggest, here in Leeds. Uh, just a bit of information, what's the current political landscape in the city? In case you don't know, Leeds has eight MPs elected every five years to represent us in Westminster. Yay. Um, but also, there are 99 councillors who are elected and paid, most of them part-time, to represent us within Leeds City Council. There are three of them for each of the 33 council wards of the city. They're elected on rotation, three years out of four. And the next election for our MPs and one of our councillors is, uh, is in May 2015. Put it in your diary. Speaking from experience, there are a few excellent local councillors rooted in their communities making a difference, like this one, um, this lovely lady. Uh, we'll, ta we'll take them with us. But there are others who are chronically controlling, like madmen, and others, uh, like in my ward, live miles away from the area and do nothing. Just out of interest, hands up, who knows their local councillors? Okay, a few of you. Good. Does everybody know who this guy is? Oh, excellent. Yeah, okay, so there's, there's not many people know who this guy, which is a shame, because he's an elected council, not doing anything. Anyway, uh, I've been talking with a lot of people recently and genuinely believe that a growing number of us are itching for a credible, um, a credible authentic alternative to the political status quo, an innovative, collaborative, community-led politics for Leeds. Now, political disruptions do crop up from time to time. There's this lot, other people not mentioned here. There's George Galloway, whatever you think of him and respect. There's a Morley Borough Independence. Um, there's uh, maybe the Green Parties in this uh, camp, I'm not quite sure. Um, some are serious, some are not. Some make a difference, some don't. Um, anyway. Uh, what could sustained political disruption look like for Leeds? Democracy is an amazing tool um, and it should be rescued. Uh, can we create an innovative, engaging new politics for Leeds? Me and some mates are plotting something on exactly those lines. We've not got a name, we haven't got a website, members, a constitution, nothing. But we want to embark on a journey and you're all welcome to join us. <coughs>